So in this video, we'll be covering the features of reflection in iRender Next, including how to create and place a mirror, how to easily select materials for editing, and review the setting options such as intensity, metallic, and glossy, and then review the results. Okay, so here's a model I put together. Um, I'm going to be loading this model up to our 3D Warehouse account. So just go there and search for Render Plus Systems and you'll find it. So we're going to cover a lot of important and very useful and very powerful stuff today that many renderers out there just simply can't do. First thing I want to do is add a mirror to this back wall. This can easily be done by coming up to the iRender Next toolbar and clicking on Create Mirror Component. From here, I can make changes to my mirror. So I just want to make it a little bit shorter and a little bit wider. And then I want to change the frame color to black. And I'm only going to place one. Then once all that's done, I can come down here and click on Create and Place. Then just put the mirror where you want it. Click once to place it. And I'll move mine over just a little bit. Okay, when that's done, we can just come up here and go ahead and click on the render button. And here it is. Nothing too crazy here. The mirror's doing what we would expect it to do. I render next already knew that this was a mirror and automatically made it reflective for us. So we didn't have to adjust anything or change any settings to get this result. Okay, so let's increase the difficulty a little bit now. I want to make this tabletop reflective. First, let me show you how not to do this. So if I was to do this traditionally, I would have to click and click and click until I finally got down to the tabletop. But iRender has a much easier way to do that built in. So let's back out of these groups. Okay, and once we're out of them all, simply hover over the tabletop, right click, and come down here and click on Edit Material. And that's it, we're ready to edit this material now. iRender is smart enough to know what material your mouse was hovering over and automatically does all the diving down into all those groups for you. I think this is a great feature. It really cuts out a lot of time and hassle that it takes doing it the traditional way. Okay, now that we have the tabletop selected, I can come over here and select from one of these default settings that we've provided for you. I'm gonna go with reflective in this case. And now I'll be explaining these settings over here in just a little bit, but for now I just want you to know that these default settings are here and they usually work really well. Um, if nothing else, they give you a good starting point so that you can fine tune your material settings. Okay, so let's see what this change looks like. We can just come down here and go ahead and click on render. And this is what you get. So again, nothing too crazy here, but you can see just a slight reflection of the teapot in the tabletop. Okay, so this has been pretty quick and painless so far, right? Now let's jump into the really powerful and exciting features of the software. Okay, so, so far we have a mirror and a reflective tabletop. But now I wanna make this teapot look more realistic. So to start doing that, we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the tabletop. Simply hover over the teapot, right click, and go to Edit Material. And then up pops this Edit Material box. Like I said earlier, there's all these defaults over here that you can choose from. But you'll notice as you click on these different settings that these values over here change. And you can see that represented in this sphere over here. Now the reason why all these values are changing when you select different defaults is to better match the characteristics of these different types of materials. Let me show you what I mean. So let's start with matte. You'll see that nothing is turned on at this point. Now let's click on plastic. When you do that, you'll see a couple of these values down here jump up. Now let's click on metal. And when you do that, you'll see that even more of these values jump up. Now let me explain why this is happening. So we all know that metal is more reflective than plastic. Well, usually that is. And that's shown here in these settings. So intensity controls how strongly things are reflected off the object. So our teapot in this case. Metal will have a higher intensity because usually metal reflects things very well. Shininess can be thought of as clarity or fuzziness. So how sharply details are shown in the reflection. When it's all the way up to one, like it is now, things are very clear. But when I turn it down to, say, 0.2, things get much more fuzzy. You can see that represented over here. Let me show you what some of these differences look like side by side. So you'll see with the plastic default at an intensity of only 0.15, only a few soft highlights can be seen on the edges. 
but on the metal default setting, you'll see that it's almost a mirror-like reflection. The reflections clearly show the checkerboard pattern from the boxes, the tabletop, and strong highlights from the lights around the room. And then on this one, still with the metal default setting, but this time with shininess turned down to 0.2. The reflections are much more fuzzy and much more unclear. Okay, so that's that. Now I'm going to talk about metallic and glossy. Now these words sound like they could mean the same thing at first, but they have important yet subtle differences that I'm going to try to explain now. So metallic controls what types of colors are reflected in the object. So I have a yellow teapot, and the color yellow has no blue in it. And you can see that up here. These are the RGB colors, so red, green, blue and you'll see that blue is at zero, meaning there is no blue in this yellow. So the blue in this blue and white checkerboard pattern over here is reflected as black in this yellow sphere. And again, that's because metallic is on, and metallic reflects colors based on the color of the object. So our yellow sphere reflects the color blue as black because there is no blue in this color yellow. Okay, well now let's say I wanna make a blue pot we can do that by changing these values over here. So if I bring blue all the way up and turn red all the way down, I now have a blue teapot and the color blue has no red in it. So when I render this scene behind me here, the red in this red and white checkerboard pattern will show as black in the reflected image in the teapot. Let me show you. So this is what I was talking about. You can see in this yellow teapot that the blue in this blue and white checkerboard pattern is reflected as black. And again, that's because this color yellow has no blue in it, therefore it's reflected as black. And the same thing goes for this blue pot down here, just the colors are switched this time. The color blue is reflected just fine, but the red in this red and white checkerboard pattern is reflected as black because there is no red in this color blue. Now I want to show you what happens when you turn metallic off and you re-render the same scene. You can see this time that all colors are reflected just fine in both teapots. This can be a little confusing at first, but uh, can be very powerful and useful once you get the hang of it. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about glossy. What glossy does is turn off the mirror-like reflections and only keep the highlights. So let me show you the differences. So up top here is the metal default setting like we saw earlier. And then the one on the bottom left is still the default metal setting, but this time with glossy turned on. And you can see how the reflections are gone, but the highlights are still there. And then the one on the right is again with the metal default and with glossy on, but I've also turned off metallic. So the only change here is in the color of the highlights. It's gone from a yellow highlight to a white highlight. So that's it. Those are the main features of reflection in iRender Next. Some of these settings can be a bit confusing at first, but once you master them, I think that you'll find them to be very useful and very powerful, and something that I don't think you'll easily find in other rendering software. So I'm going to be putting these photos up on our site at renderplus.com, so come check them out if you want to learn more. Okay, thanks for watching. Come see us again soon.